So then the last set of pages uh, is the actual uh, line, line item budget. So the summarization was on the first page we looked at in terms of the changes, but this will give you um, a total picture of the budget for each line item. And just to kind of, for everybody's benefit, to, to say again how it's organized. So FY19, um, that blue column is the local budget for FY19. And then for FY20, we have both the all funds and we have the, blue, uh, the next blue column, which is the local. And the difference between the two are the other funding sources that pay for items in the school that aren't necessarily funded by the general fund. So that's where you see those green columns over on the right-hand side, the choice, um, choice revenue, Title I, the 240 grant, SPED grant, the WINGS revolving account, and the early childhood revolving account. And then in the far two columns, you can see the increases or decreases in percent change over the last year. So I guess to, just to kind of point out how the all funds work, if you were to go to page nine and look at the instructional and assistance section, so there you can see choice pays for the classroom assistance. Um, there's also $40,000 worth of SPED aids that are paid for out of there. Um, kindergarten aid, so $199,000 in total. So you can kind of see how that offsets the budget. So in the all funds page, you know what your total expense is, but then um, the local budget gets offset by the expenditures out of those additional um, revenue sources. So that, if you have any questions specifically about it, um, otherwise the bottom line budget has gone up, as I said in the beginning, at the very end of page 12. It's, uh, the local budget is $1,952,272, a $43,456 increase over FY19, and a net percentage change of 2.28% increased. First, I just want to note that the transportation costs have gone down, or proposed to go down from this year, which is they did, they did go I, mean, I, I understood that they were going to go up slightly vis-a-vis -vis the frontier, and I understood the reasons for that, but I didn't expect them to go down. Um, they went down when, slightly. When frontiers went up so severely. Yeah, there was a pricing, I guess, strategy. <laughs> yeah, that, and I mean, it's based on government reimbursement, and it's a sound strategy. Uh, but... Um, <coughs> So the total in the total change two point two eight, correct, and the total <coughs> increase on the assessment is forty three thousand four hundred fifty six. Four hundred and fifty six. So the 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 question was in the budget from last month. Um, it it seemed that that because there, it had it, it seems to be ten thousand dollars less. I, let me see if I can if I can get online. Let me see if I can find a version of it because I think when we initially did the budget, we did not have the bid in, if I recall. Let's see if I can find another version. See the same amounts as in this budget, at least for the for the prior years.
find a version of the budget where it was higher, but I see one where it was lower, but that would have been pre pre bid pre bid opening. All right, I, I mean, I'll have the, I guess, in it, if you want me to have the town administrator call tomorrow to answer this question. Yeah, we certainly yeah. can. I mean, the yeah. budget we're going to post tonight would be less, so I imagine that would Yeah, be I mean, that's a good thing. Yeah. It's $10,000 less than what we thought it was, so that's good. Yeah, so, have, have them shoot me an email specifically, and I can look and see if I can find an older version where it was was higher. Okay. see if that, I'm understanding what you say. Okay. Any other questions on the budget? Yes. I'm just looking at some of the movement on the instructional assistance. It looks like it, the total has been net changed down a little bit. Is that possible? Some reason we like always the, get asked about them. I, I'm just trying to, because there's like a lot of different movement between the categories, between FY19 and the proposed. We, so. The number of IAs that are budgeted on this budget is are the number of IAs that we currently have. Okay. Does that help? I think so. Yeah, I think I think what's happened is you have more of them being picked up in the non local budget. And that's why it's like the all funds with you. Sorry. Like from choice or like correct. Yeah, okay. Yeah. <coughs> that's that's what I was thinking I saw. I just trying to figure that out. Okay. So, should we vote on this now? Okay. So you, you'll close the public close hearing the public part, hearing. and then you can open up the regular, and then as part of the regular business, you're going to vote accordingly. Okay. So we'll close the public meeting at 626. Open the meeting at 626 in a second. Second. <laughs> And on to review and approve minutes from February 28th, 2019. Any changes, comments? No. Good. Yep, yep. Can I have a motion? A motion to approve the minutes. Second. All in favor? Yeah. All right. All righty. And now financial statements and warrants. We signed the warrants. You told us it was five warrants for. I uh, was six warrants for thirty-four thousand two hundred five dollars and sixty cents. Alrighty, we have them all set. Um, financial statement. Um, you have in front of you a copy of the expenditures for the school through the end of February. Um, the budget is tracking according to plan. Um, there's the one item that that Kirsten and I are working on is there are some IAs that are hired to cover um, a situation with one that was not able to be hired and that may be a little outside of the budget amount. Um, however, we're just going to go through because we've done a lot of changes to this budget. We've moved salaries from the 2310 accounts to the 2305. So we're just going to do another review of the salaries to see and we did have um, a situation where we had a teacher who was out on leave and was not um, paid for that. It was an unpaid leave, so we had that money available that we used for long-term subs. So we're just going to do another revisit of the salaries and see where that puts us in terms of the payment for the um, the sub IAs. But you know, the budget itself is in very good shape, and so that I don't. There's not going to be a concern with paying for it, as you know. You, you know, even if we had to go to alternate funding sources, which we wouldn't, um, those are well funded. Every every budget line is is in a positive balance. The only really the only ones that weren't were the ones that were had expenditures in the twenty three ten lines, which just were expenses that need to be moved. And I did those actually this afternoon. So in the next budget, you won't even see those three lines. Mm -hmm. So um, overall, the budget's trending according to plan. We're just looking at the the cost of those those IAs, which is not a huge amount of money, um, and the budget is on track and positive. And any chance we'll have any surpluses at the end of the year that Kristen will need <coughs> to spend I'm money on? starting my list. Okay. Is that to you and Darius <laughs> as we get along? Yeah. Okay. Just like to plan ahead for those yes. things. Yes. 
So yes, thank you. Create your dream list now. Yes, so. yeah. Yeah. it's in my top drawer. There you go. <laughs> Excellent. Anything else on the financials that anybody has any questions about? Okay. Uh, I guess we have another public comment. Public, you have nope. any comment? Nope, quiet. <laughs> <laughs> nice to have you here, though. Thanks, yeah. Matt. Uh, unfinished business, discussion items, now we propose FY20 budget. Well, that's a pretty good looking budget from yeah. Gary, so like our budget, huh? Yeah, your, your budget's the friendliest so far. I know, <coughs> I figured. Are we ready to take a vote on it? Yeah. Can I, can I have a motion to accept? Yeah, I'll move to the So you Michael motion, motions? All right, I'll take Your motion's got to have the number in it. All right, so yeah, 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 you're right. Yeah. <coughs> I'm getting better. Yeah. So actually, so you're going to move, and Mark's going to help you. Yeah. Tell you the exact number you want to move. You're going to you're going to vote the FY20 budget recommended budget of one million nine hundred and fifty two thousand two hundred and seventy two dollars. One million nine fifty two. Two seventy two. Nine fifty two two seventy two. I make a motion to move the recommended budget of one million nine hundred and fifty two thousand two hundred and seventy two dollars. I'll second. All in favor? Yes. Aye. 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 Excellent. Yeah, this was a not a not a battle budget at all this year. Was nice. So this was already was this already sent to select board and fine and come? Yeah. yeah. So we be making changes to it, so we don't have to. Usually after this, i got to figure out i got to send it to them. I'll, I'll tell you that I would send it to them, but they already have it. So, yep. Mm -hmm. all right, we're good. Mm -hmm. All right, update <coughs> on proposed marijuana establishment. Who's going to update us on that? I don't have any updates on that. I'm I know that there was a lively letter conversation letter. the other night on it. <laughs> I'm, work, I'm doing a little more research, so uh, when I'm creating the letter to the town administrator. Yeah, the, it was, the, they were voted, they were approved, uh, community host agreements were approved by the town on Monday night. What were approved, Phil? I'm sorry. Community host agreements for two proposed cultivation operations, one on Roanbrook Road and one on Poland. North Poland Road, Main Poland Road, no, North Poland Road. Um, and uh, yeah, the hearing, so not in the school. The hearing was legendarily so. contentious. Mm -hmm. um, Dan the cameraman this week? yes Dan the cameraman has been telling every committee board in every town since Monday night that they have to watch it it must see TV thanks Dan yeah yeah it was contentious oh my goodness All right, um, can tell me so, so the long and the short of it though is that um, that the, you know the, the, what the basis of the contention was that the, the town has to estimate its costs um, uh, because the, the, the proposed operations are uh, craft cultivation operations. The town has no authority to tax those operations, um, which was a great, a great letdown for me personally. I um, bet. You'd like to tax everything. Well, I, I, I was like, no, new revenue, hip hop, yay. Um, um, but so, so the, 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 the town is allowed to assess up to 3% of gross sales uh, um, uh, if, if, uh, if they have actual expenses particular to each operation. Well, we're um, more policing, Up to 3%. And so, um, yeah, that's what you would think. However, our police chief stated that they, he would have no additional expenses whatsoever. Um, wow. Uh, and so, yeah, uh, so, so what we did think that n n more expenses, well, possible expenses would possibly come from a school type curriculum for sixth graders regarding cannabis and That's whatever. That's a good idea. Um, and there was some dispute over whether that was a particular thing to each location, each individual business, or whether that was just a societal concern that would be unfair to charge to the particular businesses. Um, but the long and the short of it is, we grew, we agreed to a 1.5 percent uh, community host fee, as opposed to what they were pushing for, which was up to three percent with a right of arbitration if they disagreed. Um, they being the pot businesses. Yes, yes, yes. Um, so, yeah.
So if you have three hours and you're bored, go ahead and tune in. I don't but, think I have uh, that. <laughs> <laughs> so it's one and a half percent of gross sales. One and a half percent of gross sales the first year and descending by a quarter percent for the next couple of years after that. Um, and that's what we decided. But yeah. So, but, but there still is a need for actual numbers. So I'm glad that Christine. Christian is a That's not yeah. municipal cash cow territory. Not at all. Mm -hmm. no, no. Surprising. Yes, yes. So you're working on a letter to discuss a pro possible program for sixth graders? Yes, and funding for Like that. touring the marijuana business? <laughs> yeah, that's why I'm, I'm trying to research and see what's out there so Sorry. it's appropriate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, 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 one proponent, uh, the one proponent felt that it was unfair that she herself being a uh, 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 having extensive teaching experience would not be asked to participate in the curriculum, thereby saving the money from whatever. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, people are discussing the fact that, you know, the, the valley was the huge tobacco. We made so much money in tobacco, and now this is our next cash crop. So, I mean, if it's happening, why, why not jump in? So the tax structure is But you'd hope the town would benefit in some way. <coughs> yes, the town would benefit from a commercial cultivation right. or a retail, right. especially the retail. Right. But that being said, the retail... Not big traffic in Conway. Yeah, I mean, I think Deerfield, I, uh, from what I understand, Deerfield's... They support the business. The support for retail in Deerfield is evaporating, so... Huh, okay. Wow. I wasn't aware of the tax structure. It's cultivation. Yeah, it's, it's way too much that I had to learn about all this stuff. It's just, it's just, yeah. All righty. That was known when it was originally voted on in town meeting. I wonder what would have happened. Yeah. You know? This was right. promised as a mm -hmm. way to Big reduce taxes. Money. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. Bill, did you say it was a town hearing that was approved in? Yeah. On oh, Monday. That's why all the cars were downtown. All right. Uh, discussion of hand dryers. This is my topic. We have the quote. We're ready to roll. I we're know, but I have a brain on your parade. Oh yeah, what was that? <laughs> oh, yeah. no. And I have been pushing this because I, I know, Gary still laughs. I have been so excited about this because you know, save the trees, save the yeah, paper, yeah, yeah. right? And so I was saying, you know, at work to my boss, who's the executive director, and she was like, oh no, you don't want those. And I'm like, why? There is a lot of research on their less hygienic. Yeah. And like significantly less. Like no matter whether it's cold air, hot air, no matter where you put it in. I meant to send you articles because like the CDC is saying that they're not hygienic. Takes the bathroom air and it blows them all through. With, With all the germs all the in it onto your hands you just washed. That are wet. Mm -hmm. yeah. That are wet. Well, there is research out that says boosting your immune system by contact with <laughs> pathogens prevents allergies. Uh, that, that which does not kill you makes you stronger. I have to disagree when it comes to clean hands. <laughs> I really do. Because, I mean, and, and I'm a little, because a few years, when I worked at Frontier, I got a virus that practically killed sure. me. I mean, really. It was not from Frontier, nor can you prove that. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was, but... It could have happened, you could have got it when uh -huh. you were shopping, and you brought it to school. Yep. I had 103 fever for five weeks. And it was like I did not have my strength or energy back until I went out March 15th. I didn't come back till after va April vacation. Half days of school days. Like, really? I, I couldn't, I, I was all over that building, every floor, every whatever. I could be, I was worried about getting from the parking lot into the building with the energy I had. I and then, things. and then, like, you know, didn't have my full strength back till the next fall. But you were using paper towels. It was a virus. And since then, I have become a very good hand washer. But you, mm. but but the and bathrooms have not had, been ill. But the bathrooms had paper towels then, and maybe if the bathrooms had hand dryers, you would have been used to a, no. uh, you, your your immunity would have been boosted up from exposure to all those additional pathogens. I think we have to read these articles before we decide about putting the hand dryers. So I think you guys one, really have I to think read one the articles. piece of research data that we don't have is 
will kids wash their hands more thoroughly if they're given the option of drying either they don't care. They don't oh, care if it's a paper towel or a hand dryer. If it's their pants. My son is a picky child. Yeah. And well, he, if he catches anything, it's from my son because my son. He doesn't want to. The you know the hair the hand dryer is like Whoa, it's too messy. He would rather just take a piece of paper. I mean, I was all. I, my, <laughs> yeah, right. My priority really was the environment. You know what I mean? Because I hate you go. I hate how many paper towels we go through and like. All that kind of yeah. stuff. But when I learned this, you got to read the articles. They're scary. Sure. I do like the paper towel to open the door with, but the doors are open. Exactly. Open. There's uh, an additional quantifiable cost in, in uh, supplies every year. Did you read the... No, you no, you no, I just... Google it. Uh, like, the seat... This is, like, <coughs> solid research. This is not... The, the, like, the town saves money on, air dry, on dryers, though. I don't care. Yeah. Well, we're going to get that back from marijuana growers. Yeah. Eventually, I, I don't I care. I think maybe we. Maybe I mean, I care more the instead. environment than the saves <laughs> money. I mean, one of those ones so that fills what up. Do, we do you want me to send you some articles? Wait, they're all ready. They're all ready to be put in. But I had, I had pushed this to put them in, and I okay. did not do all my homework. I guess. How much are we? How much are we spending on paper towels? Two minutes. It's not about money. It's, it's about health. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a five figure yeah, number. It's a, it's a five figure number. So do you want do you want us to I can go back with some research on the amount of paper towel we have and you're gonna come back with research on the um, Airflow, and you're going to come back with research. On I mean, I don't, I don't care about anything. I care about health and hygiene. If we're going to spend more money to put in a feature that spreads more germs, that spreads more germs than the cost of what it costs us to operate paper towels, it doesn't seem like a decent. Well, work. no, it does because we, we spend the the. Paper towels are disposable. You spend it every year. You put the hand dryers in. You spend it once, and unless you fix them every five years or so, it saves you money. It's a, obviously it saves money. It's just it's not healthy. Is it all? It's a hand health dryers? issue, not a yes. What about the ones that you put your hands down no. in, like at the aquarium? It blows the germs <laughs> from the bathroom but it's not like around the room. UV light or something that catches it. No, it catches the germs. It's all of them. Do we want to Hot air, cold air. Month? People do their respective research. I'll you have to tell me to put a freeze on it because we have ordered the put, <laughs> no. put a hold on it. No. Yes. No, no. Really? Yeah. yeah. Committee, yeah. Away. That, this is not. This is serious. <coughs> I can't this believe is it. Germs. I can't believe it. Oh. Absolutely. <coughs> I will send Something you articles so we can read. Them. Okay. I'll get you articles. But they'll never get sick. Had anybody heard of this before? I, heard of I, did, I did see. I, I mean, I remember hearing it's that. It's not. I'm like, it's not fringe. This is like. I hate the hand dryer. Real research. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't put, yeah, it doesn't yeah. And it's funny if you go to one of the other Little Allen's paper towels. So we have both. I mean, is there research that says it's not good for the hearing of children? That type of frequency. And I mean, it, we could go on yeah. and on. That I would, I would have concerns about. Okay. It's head level. Come on. It's 30 know. seconds. The kids are going to do way more damage with their headphones. She doesn't care if they can music. hear. She just doesn't want them spreading germs. It's germs! Yes. I'm kidding. 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 I'm like every, I thought it was all like sanitary. I'm sorry that they didn't bring it up to you. Shut up! I've so never heard this. I'm like, sorry, I'm, research. I'm legitimately sorry that I didn't bring it up. Fills in what doesn't. So um, you heard this? How did I not hear so this? So we'll table that. I was approached during the um, during that conversation from a young man from the first grade who'd like us to come visit the okay. research fair. So if we could take five minute recess to. Sure. Go over there, or absolutely have an open meeting. You can follow us with a camera. Yeah, let's <laughs> do it. Either way, so All let's right, go over let's and do that. Take five minutes so we can get there before they close up. All right, yeah, on to new business. Thank you all for taking time. Sure. Five-year transportation contract. So that was sent out to you, um, <clears throat> and we'll be voting on it at the joint meeting on April fourth. Okay. So and the so the yeah, what we talked about here is we're here. So the uh, it was one bid. Um, there were uh, six bids taken out, and one bid came back, and it was good for the local or, or local um, 
who had the contract before, our local transportation company had a contract before, and the way he set up the bid was that the elementary schools took a very little, $2 more per day, um, and the regional school took the brunt of the hit. And that's the largest growth in the re part of the regional budget, but the regional budget gets um, reimbursement from the state. And so he said, being the loan bidder, you're allowed to negotiate, so we had a conversation about it. Um, and you know, he said, you can restructure how you want, but you know, those are his growth, and that's how we set it up that he thought would we find most um, commendable. Um, and so that's how we kind of did it. Either way, the towns would be taking the cost either through Frontier or through the towns. It keeps the the local elementary school budget smaller, and then the um, regional transportation gets reimbursed to a different level. So if that goes up, which we hope it will, it's kind of low right now, considering. We all kind of laugh. It used to be 100 percent. I think it's at 66 percent now. So hopefully that'll go up slightly between now and the, and the House One, House Two budget. So um, so anyway, so you will have to you'll be voting on the transportation budget for Union 38 at the joint meeting. So I just want to make sure you got um, what that contract looks like. And the bid sheet is the last sheet that has the numbers on it. That's probably the most interesting part. Um, this was put together by our attorney, um, and. Yeah. So I ask the question every time. Maybe we can wrap it into the promise somehow. But it's just so ridiculous that we have to run these big buses around that have six kids. five kids. <coughs> like, it's just crazy. And I know it's tied to X, Y, or I don't know, but you have to have enough, enough for the potential kids on the route or something, but I don't even know why. It's just ridiculous. So, I mean, that was brought up in the sense of, could you ask for vans to be used on part of the loops? You'd have to make that as part of the bid, and then be prepared to pay more for it, because any contractor is going to change his, his or hers transportation. Although he's got a ton of vehicles, all sizes. So, so he wouldn't have to buy new vehicles. This was actually a topic of conversation at one of the thrilling quarterly <coughs> select county selectmen's dinner. It should be. It's crazy. Um, and um, and I did find out that uh, Mohawk actually one of the towns as part of Mohawk petitioned did did the Desi waiver application process to get out from underneath the the got got to be able to have a seat for every kid that could possibly take the bus and it was denied. Um, I see it was denied. Yeah. My circle owners looked into it for here a few years ago and went did all the research in the end decided it's it's almost impossible to do to have the town actually do it. Yeah. It's really stupid. It's so it dumb. doesn't there don't seem to be any viable alternatives. Why? It should be. Well how do they get away with it in Long Meadow when they don't have any buses? It's either you have to have a seat for every kid or you don't have to have any buses at all? Well if you live they have no buses in Long Meadow? Everybody walks. They must. You have they to be a certain distance miles? from the school. I think, uh, isn't it a mile, mile or two miles? You can uh, walk a mile to a bus stop. You can walk a mile to a bus stop, which is something that we don't, you know, not that I'm looking to enforce, but people right. don't realize that you, if you live in the end of the road, your child could be asked to walk to the end of the road mm -hmm. to be, you know, where they used to have. And my other group, if you had a group bus stop, everybody locally got to one stop instead of stopping in front of every house kind of deal. But again, that's. You drive a mile to the bus stop now because of where I live, and that'll turn into a quarter mile next week. Some of, the miles aren't aren't some of the miles aren't they safe. They could walk, I yeah. would. They you could. could make them walk. I could make them walk in their box <laughs> on the mud <laughs> yep. with extra breakfast bars. And I could stash a snack halfway. Put air dryers on the end. <laughs> 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 air dryers, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Got a sassy committee tonight. Mm -hmm. All right, I just have to bring it up every time because it's ridiculous. I don't know if it is. Or, you know, I think we should all keep our ears open for answers or anybody. If Mohawk did it, maybe we can chat up with Buconi or whoever. Darius, you must. Uh, run no, they tried. They, they didn't get it. They, the waiver was denied. This could be urban rumor. I mean, I no, no, to, no. That was I a that was a slip and say who did it. Chat yeah, him up. See, I can chat him up. I'll see him. Maybe if two districts together went after something, we can 
Well, so just a force. A, well, what's what's interesting about this number is because people the comment was made at the that was at the uh, public hearing of the budget. Um, the, what the frontier public hearing of the budget? There was comments of you know it's a monopoly. Is it a monopoly? That kind of thing. Um, <coughs> the price we got was very fair. Oh, totally. And yeah. and it's cheaper up north. Um, a group of schools got together and they asked us to join them, do a joint bid in order to lower rates. But the, this time, going through the joint bid, there was no exit clause. So you kind of, before they tried joint bids, and then if you didn't like it, you got out. And mm -hmm. you know, then all of a sudden the bid changes because everybody leaves and it's not good enough. Mm -hmm. um, and they were significantly higher. I think it was almost sixty dollars a day higher. Yeah. Um, He's really so. Fair. So it was a it was a fair budget overall. So even though the naysayers of it's a monopoly, yes, he was the lone bid. And I'm not sure, he's know, very kind to us. It was he could. Mm -hmm. uh, he he, was, and he works with us so much on every he little thing. Does, yeah. So anyway, that's just for. Yeah. All right. So that'll be voted next uh, on the fourth. Okay. Um, the fourth is going to be a busy meeting. That we're talking about the fourth. Um, we have the joint meeting. We hope to have um, interviewing the new business manager um, applicant. Um, Wrap today. April fourth. It's April fourth. Six. At six. So, um, so we'll be. And then we we'll talk about the calendar. So that'll be trying. To, I'm trying to line everything up so we don't have to have another joint meeting because that has to be approved by the joint committee. The business manager does. So um, <coughs> we have done interviews there, and we're in that next kind of phase of references and, and um, follow-ups and that kind of stuff. But they hope to have a candidate to you, um, obviously prior. You'll find out prior is with the agenda and such um, to interview that evening. Um, at that point. So, um, any questions on it? Mm -hmm. so Looking forward to that one, actually. Yeah, so, the, the, the joint meeting, and then Al said the joint meeting, the Frontier is going to be voting the capital plan. The only real thing that's going to be on the elementary agenda will be to school choice. Um, I think it's the only vote that will be happening at the elementary. So when you break out sessions, and I try oh, to keep okay. that, I try to keep that very limited. Good. You know, um, okay. you get financial statements and then um, school choice. Okay. Um, yay or nay, and just a discussion on that. So, so that's my attempt. Here. I'll try to do that. The other thing that will be voted at the joint meeting is the calendar, and so that is in front of you. Um, so you have two calendars in front of you. One has got rainbow colors on it. Um, those are all the different school committees. So I set it up similar to what we did this year, where we have double meetings, where for you, you don't have double meetings, but um, for stacking meetings, so there's less nights out um, for my family. <coughs> um, you know, you can adjust, but you just have to stay in. If you don't like the calendar, you want to move things around, you certainly can do those kind of things, but I got to kind of schedule them all at once so that you kind of stay in your lane and not, you know, you can't have where other people have already scheduled. Mm -hmm. And then obviously during, not obviously, but during the budget months, it goes back to single night meetings um, as we get to the budget process. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. And then the other one is the school calendar. <clears throat> the highlights of the school calendar where there's going to be, I know there's going to be discussion, is that um, in August, um, I put in the a longer weekend again for Labor Day when we start school then have a long weekend. Um, that is um, lively discussion on that um, mm -hmm. at the other meetings. Um, some people love it, some people don't like it, some people don't care. Um, and the other one thing that will be talked about is whether or not the 20th of December should be a full or half day of school. Um, it's always been a half day for the longest period. But when I went back, um, I actually did this research today, when I went back and looked at the last time we had a 19 or 20 happen before um, before the break, they've been full days of school. Usually, you know, you have the 22nd or 23rd, it's a half day, it's very close to a major holiday mm -hmm. um, for people uh, being Christmas there. Um, but when you're five days out, the question is whether or not that should be a full day of school. Mm -hmm. So. Teachers are telling me they'd like to be a half day because those kids are like shaking bottles of Coca-Cola and they're kind of keeping the lid on all day. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, that's going to be, those are kind of the highlights of it. Mm -hmm. The other thing that was a discussion point was the early release schedules continuing moving forward. Um, and the, 
that is something that we have to look at um, as a you know the model that we've designed. I think um, we kind of patched it together over the years, and it wasn't what it was originally promised. This uh, this is feed me saying feedback that I've heard. Mm -hmm. At the same time, as you've heard, you've been notified of Louise Law is leaving. I didn't want to change um, the professional de model, the professional development model delivery. We haven't put a lot of time, I haven't had time this year to put into doing that, and so that is something that we're going to work on as an ministry of team next year. I don't want to go back to what the old system was, which was nothing. Mm -hmm. um, it was parent conferences in one day a year, and that's not professional development. I think we've made some, and Kristen can kind of chime in on that, uh, we made some good strides in professional development and mm -hmm. in, in moving things. Um, it hasn't been ideal um, for the child care aspect of it, um, and, and uh, we've also, you know, a lot of the IAs had to take up a lot of the supervision of those kids in that during that gap time um, between after school, between the early release and after school care. So, um, I mean, those areas we have to kind of improve or look at a different model. But so the plan is to continue the early release model. So continue the same model we had this year and putting a gap in the winter months of January and February not doing mm -hmm. those because um, it gets kind of crazy when there was a snow day and early release and mm -hmm. uh, not early release, uh, delayed right. um, because of weather and then right. put them and so that so we're following the same model um, <coughs> and again it's you know, doing a rush job. So, it's, so it's 19 days early release, is that right? I um, think that's what I just counted. It's 20, it's 19, but it's really 20 because the first is a half day for parent conferences. Okay. So that would be a PD day for right. um, Frontier, and so it would be a half day for parent teachers conferences. Yep. Um, I did reach out to the association and, and tried to do a swap of um, kind of an early release thing for an evening, so that the parent conference could be at night. It really didn't fly, so um, you know we're trying not to get more data on that. As a we're trying to we're going to be polling parents on different things coming mm -hmm. up, and just the need for a night meeting and whether or not we should press for that in the future from teachers, or is it just one of those things we assume? Um, a lot of teachers do it anyways. You know they're staying late and coming early to meet with parents. Sometimes I don't know if that helps or hurts to put it in a scheduled time, but just mm -hmm. a little bit more. I mean, I also decisions. wonder if there's some. <clears throat> You know, I'm sure Sarah and Louise have thought of this, but more. But I mean, so that basically winds up to 4.38 full school days, 20 days. Well, I did 19, um, so a little more than that. So is some mix better? Would be two full PD days? Could you get more done, like those kids, you know, and then cut your early release days in half? Do you really get a lot done in the hour and a half of time that you have for PD? You know, because uh, for, for the, I mean, I think certainly this people have adapted to it, but it doesn't mean it's easy on some families, yep. you know. Um, so. um, there's two things I was going to say, I was going to say, oh, um, is the families and the teachers really appreciate that the January and February, no really release. Yeah. Teachers felt like they had gotten great momentum during those two months, which was great. And families really appreciated that in the winter, especially because if we had a delay or something, so they'd have to go in to work late or something. Yeah. And the other thing I just wanted to mention here at Conway, anyway, um, parents were um, upset last year and will we'll be very happy about that Friday before Labor Day. We had a ton of kids that were out anyway because people take it as a long weekend so that's just the conway sense just to keep mm -hmm. in your mind while voting mm -hmm. they'll be happy to see that oh, right, right. yeah i mean i was shoveling oh, a pick i was shoveling a pick at the frontier meeting i said i was saying that you know the school calendar sets the community calendar and where do we put our values do we want a long weekend with families at the end of the summer are you yeah, ready can, to just can, get them back to school? I can shovel and just the, the best. Right. <laughs> no. I mean, I was on the school committee back when we had two different schedules. How did the early releases? So, you know, I, I thank God we can start before Labor Day, and if that's a little give back we give to be able to continue start before Labor Day, I'm like all in. But it does seem ridiculous how, in other ways. How did the early releases work with like going to school 180 days? Like. Do they count as a full time day? on learning? Yeah. It counts as a full day. It counts as it's amount of hours. So we, we still are okay in the amount of hours that you have to have. Nine hundred and ninety instructional hours. 
So it's actually more of an hours calculation. But we have to put the number of days. Do, 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 oh, you don't, yeah. So half days count as a day. Right. And then it's hours of instruction. So if we went to full days <coughs> and took full days off to do PD, we would go longer into the right. summer. Correct. Because However, you contractually, <coughs> teachers have to work 182 days. So with 180 of those days of student contact. So we only have two days. So it's the day before school begins, which you really have to have to. Right. And then right. We, we, do the, we do the election day. It yeah. used to be November, right. October 30th, used to be an all county professional development. And then they shift that to election day, which makes a lot of sense, yeah. um, especially as a lot of polling places are schools. Um, and then the problem we've had is that became parent conference days. Mm -hmm. And so you got a third of the par a parent, a third of these early release days are parent conference days, and so parents conference time. So, um, I mean, in, in Northampton, we what we do is a full week of half days, mm -hmm. and half of the days, the parent teacher conferences are from one to three, and half of them are from six or five to seven or something like that. So you get a couple nights. In a couple of days, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it's a, but it's a full week and a half days, which is pretty hard. Like it's, mm -hmm. it ch I mean, really changes the. It's mid October. It really oh, changes the instruction. Twenty half days spread out through the year. I don't know. It's not half. I appreciate Gary's trying because, you know, parent teacher conferences are really hard for working parents. parents yeah. that work yeah. nine to five. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's really hard. It was for that. very hard. <clears throat> yeah. yeah, yeah. You'd have to take time out of work. Right. So and just the complexities that are overlaid on top of these types of decisions, just I couldn't. Right. The, 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 the constraints that we have from the, our labor agreements are significant, and um, that that that, the, that this stuff is like a significant issue in our negotiations. Are always right. and within the PD itself, the the model was to have more frequently with less time in order so that you don't. Have that speaker come speak to you and go. Blah blah blah. That's right. that, that's your that's your professional development. Right. It was ongoing, and I saw it through a very different lens in the, as the frontier principal because we were able, you were able to get things going. You're not having to leave the buildings. Where we're struggling with the, so if Conway wants to do professional development, let's say you want to get all the third grade teachers together to talk about new curriculum or new idea, you know, new kind of, they have to get up, they have to to pack up, get the kids out, and then they right. got to drive to a mutual right. site so and unpack, an and so they lose, you know, the hour and a half is now just an hour, right. and it's a Friday, you know, one, you know, Friday goes both ways. Right. It works sometimes, it maybe work a little bit better for families because right. it's not the middle of the week and that kind of families. chaos. Um, the other idea of Friday was that you're not trying to prep for tomorrow morning's class. You're not allowed to because you're supposed to be doing press but you're not thinking that way. You can stop because you right. have time before your next day of work right. um, with the kids. So that was the, you know, we, we did this by looking at other districts who were doing it. So there was ideas as to when people were saying, why Friday afternoon? It's clearly boondoggle time. People are out. leaving and, right. you know, everybody's, you know, it, that's not why, that's why it was set up. So, um, and if you do it before school, most of the time, not most of the time, many times teachers are trying to sneak away in order to do the last second prepping or, they, you know, make sure things are all set for their day, which is natural, but, you know, right. as we would do. So that was the, how that ended up on a Friday afternoon. So there was a lot of thought that got into why it was then and there. Um, but I also know when, you know, as we shifted, if you had a snow day and other stuff, and all of a sudden it right. feels like there was no learning that week. And right. You get a bunch of that before, a couple weeks before MCAS testing, and then all of a sudden right. the teachers feel like they didn't, yeah. the kids aren't in the groove. And so... It's a balance. Yep. So, but anyway, so we're, we're going to be looking at that, and we'll be talking about it more with you okay. next year, if approved, of course. Yeah. Did our votes, capital projects? No, I only have uh, two updates, and that is that well, the learning lab floor is going to be done over the April break, and um, the hydration station is ready to be installed by the end of April. Cool. Maybe we can afford two more with our hand dryer. I actually <laughs> had put a sentence in about the hand dryer before the meeting, just because I knew what I was going to report on, but I quickly deleted that. <laughs> what, was the what was the sentence? <laughs> no, never mind. <laughs> she went to all that work writing oh, well, the sentences. She deleted it. I deleted it. that much. <laughs> and we, you got us a, mutton, a number on the bottled water. 
Yes. We did. Yeah. Are we charging that to the well people? No, I have not thought about the time on that. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, That's not a little bit of money. Over a thousand. Mr. Select Board Member. <laughs> I love you too. Are we going to charge the well people? Yeah, I'll, I'll have to remember it. Okay. I have to remember to bring that up as well. All right. And our key fobs are up and running, or we're still working on it? We're working on it. We're going to be writing the uh, that grant that you sent us, Darius. We're going to be writing the grant. Okay. I met with the Scott and Bob. There's a grant out there for um, Safe Schools, $7 million. Cool. It's out there for, particularly for entryways and security, door security, cameras, and that kind of stuff. So cool. trying to get each of the schools that are to update different areas. And, awesome. Um, oh, oh, Sun I Sunderland got some of that money last year, and they were able to put a lot toward that. Um, cool. Their chief of police actually, it's, it's part of the grant, but the chief of police actually wrote the grant and then got it for the school. So. That's the governor's education initiative for this year. Okay. But he took away eighty thousand, seventy thousand dollars of our transportation money to do it. But hey, enjoy your key fobs. Yeah. Yeah. I just have a little update. Well, sure. That little conversation. I quick sent an email to Bob Lesko and Bruce. They said, "Subject line: Hold on the hand driver drivers per school committee." Bob Lesko, contractor has PO and we may have to pay restocking charge for dryers. What happened? Question. <laughs> <laughs> we can. <laughs> can we, can like we convert current, it for like boot, boot dryers from after recess? <laughs> I think. Here's what I think. I think we should install them and and observe our wellness. A science project. It's either I'll, one I'll, or the other. You can't. Get it it no. Just put a sheet of paper right next to those more serious diseases from this dryer here. I guess you, know, you technically do have <laughs> both <laughs> options available at the public <laughs> education facility. Yeah, but if you're in the bathroom and I'm in the bathroom and you choose to spread the germs around, they're going to impact me. <laughs> I'm sure Daryl will work with us. It's Chase Electric. He's a Conway grad. Come on now. He's. Not if you don't pay him to put them in. <laughs> <laughs> we'll pay him to put them in something else. <laughs> new paper towels. Electric paper dispensers. There you go. <laughs> Wave your hand Just in the paper towel. That is out. true. Yeah, yeah. The yeah. automatic paper towel <laughs> things are better yeah. because you don't waste as much as when they pull the roll. There you go. Thank you, Kristen. There you go. All right, move on. Um, our report for principal was our yes thing. Okay. Darius, do you have a report for us? There's all the other stuff. Okay. Uh, do we need any executive session? You're that was there. that was up to you. <laughs> I was there. <laughs> that that was up to whether you feel like you need a, a, a update on what do or if you want an update on how the negotiations are going. Hmm. Then we have to go into executive session for that to be provided to you. If not, we can adjourn. So you pick. <laughs> <laughs> I, I trust that you are uh, fulfilling. We're our representing you vision. well. Yes. 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 But next that. time, Darius is bringing Snickers bars. <laughs> uh. <laughs> and we'll tell you that story another time. Okay. All right. Can I have a motion to adjourn? Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, everybody. All right.